welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. So this week, it looks like I have a lot of pens here, but they're not all inked. So you won't see them all right. But uh, I have some upcoming videos I want to film, and uh, I had them out for that reason. Uh, so a couple of these are new to me. Uh, this is new to me. This is an Aero Unser Bester, which is inked up. This is a Cora, a Dutch pen, Platinum 3776, Pilot Vanishing Point. Another Arrow. I don't know the name on it, so we'll just go with Arrow. This is a, uh, what is this one? A Wing Sung Lucky? No, that's wrong. Wing Sung 698. There we go. Uh, this is an Aurora 88. Not inked up as of this moment, but it's an upcoming review and I had it out. Uh, Pilot Fermo. Recent review. Pilot Justice. Uh, Yaroslavl, which is a pen I recently restored. Lummy 2000, which now that I think about it, just ran out of ink today. So I should pull that one out. Because I have several pens inked up in black, so we'll just wash it. Uh, here is a Montbon, Montbon um, 32. And finally a Parker 51, which I reviewed this week. So those are the pens I have inked up at the moment. Except for the ones that aren't. So let me set aside the two that are not inked up so I don't get confused and wonder what's going on. Almost want to start singing, right? What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, that's why I don't sing. All right, so today is April 28th. Less than a month from now, school will be over. <laughs> hey. Alright, so this pen is an Aero Unser Bester. It's a um, pretty unassuming little pen. You know, it's it's that look I like. It's a very plain black pen. It does have a large ink window, so when I uh, review it, I'll have to make sure I show you that before I fill, fill it. But it's a nice kind of bluish ink window right there. Um... As I said, fairly plain. It's a, it's a pen. It's a German pen from I believe the '60s, and it's really broad nib. It's gold nib too. So Aero. Or no, Germans don't roll their R's. Aero, Unser, Bester. The ink is a. Uh, while I was trying to figure out if I had a brown ink, I found one. California Havan. It's not an ink I use very often, but it's actually working pretty well in this pen. And I won't say it's an exciting color, but whatever. The pen is, you know, it's okay. It's a piston filler. Uh, it's just that look I like, and I like that it's, it's, it's a less commonly seen brand. Which is what I like. Here's my Cora. Uh, I'm trying to... I, I found some information about Arrow. I found absolutely nothing about Cora. Other than on the website where I purchased it. So this is a Cora. It's a 1950s Dutch pen. And the ink in it is still Private Reserve. And as was mentioned to me, the uh, color may not necessarily be like a true avocado Cora so yeah it's it's that look I like again I, I have a senator pen which I haven't inked up yet but I want to do another one's very plain gray like this it, it's just something about that aesthetic I like it <laughs> um, not that I don't mind the fancier pens I mean platinum 3776 And as long as uh, now the the Lamy has run dry and I have two pens inked in black right here, I'm just going to uh, use these two up before I ink that one up again. Uh, this is the Pelican Edelstein Pelican, sorry, Edelstein Onyx, 
Which reminds me that uh, last week I did some close-ups of inks. So I will do that again this week. Um, and I've neglected to compare the Onyx with uh, the Pelic Pelican Brilliant Black. And the Brilliant Black is in the front running. This would be a front runner too if it weren't so darn expensive. Alright, the Pilot Vanishing Point after I had it out last week to review the, the Fermo. I don't think... Oh, I did have it out last week. Okay. Uh, after I had it out to review the Fermo, I... Uh, I just had to ink it up, so of course, Pilot Vanishing Point. Uh, this has a medium nib on it. I could interchange with the Fermo, but I won't. Because this gold nib goes better with this finish than it would with the green. Alright, and let's see, what ink is this? Deatrementus. Apple Blossom. It's one of those scented inks, which I always think is interesting. Mm. It smells like dish soap. <laughs> All right, this one is an arrow. This is, uh, I don't think, a very expensive arrow at its time. Um, but the, you know, the finish here, you can see a line there. It's it's a really thin plastic pasted onto the pen. You know, this isn't some fancy celluloid or whatnot. And I'm pretty sure this is a steel nib. You know, it's a stiff bugger. So it's an arrow of some kind. The ink is... Whoops. Um, pearl Violet. So far I'm not seeing a lot of greens. Although I am kind of liking the line variation on this guy. And then we get to this very odd Wing Sung. Which is actually a very quality feeling pen. Uh, I can thank a uh, video by Chris Rap 52 for turning me on to this pen. This is, uh, the ink in this is Noodler's General of the Armies. Uh, there's some history behind the color. I don't really remember it off the top of my head. Um, but the green means something, and then when it turns blue, that's supposed to commemorate, you know, the old blue Union uniforms that we did. I just thought it matched the pen, you know. Again, it has, it's a little fancier than some of the others, but it, it's kind of got that nice, simple aesthetic I like, and it has a nice ink window. Now the feet actually, let's see if I can show you, there we go. The feet actually reminds me of a Pilot Metropolitan. Um, we have a, this ink, when I come back to it next week, should be blue. Uh, if you look at... My record where I inked it up, I think it'll be blue there. Well, turning blue. Not totally blue yet. There's definitely still some green in it. But it's on its way to blue. It just ages over time. Uh, this is a Pilot Fermo. I reviewed it last week. Fermo. This is a fine nib. And this pen, I believe, is platinum black. I am right. Um, not a bad black. I don't like that it dries more gray. So, not a contender. I like the bottle, though. All right, then we get down to uh, Pilot Justice 95, which is almost empty. Uh, now, I had a question about this pen. Let me finish right in here. Uh, how, how it compares to the 
to which pen? This pen, the, the Platinum 3776. Let me just do real quick. No pressure, full pressure. Or at least as much pressure as I'm willing to put on it. Now with the Platinum, also a soft fine nib. No pressure, pressure. So uh, actually I'd say that I'm getting a little more with the more variation with the Pilot Justice. But in fairness, I'm not pushing either pen as far as I can because you know I'm scared of the nib going boing. Which, uh, ironically, I have a restoration project that is stalled, and that is two-thirds of the reason why, because the nib is sprung, and I'm trying to figure out how to fix it. And I don't mean sprung like, boing! I mean more like, so, <laughs> that one's an interesting project, and I don't know how to fix it yet, but I'm getting there. Um, it may involve buying a new nib. Um, also trying to figure out how to get the section out of the barrel, so all kinds of projects going on there. Uh, but you'll find more feedback here with uh, the Platinum than you will with the Pilot. The Pilot's just smoother. Uh, but at the same time, the Platinum you can can be had for, what, a third of the price of this? So make of that what you will. This is my uh, Russian pen, uh, Yaroslavl. Now, same thing as last week. The ink is not in the tines. And by the way, if you watched my Parker 51, this is not a Parker 51, but a similar design. This is a, kind of a, like a, whoa, maybe a 45 or something. So let me quick uh, fill the tines with ink. Uh, personally, I think they're a little too far apart. But it works, and I got to learn how to clean really caked in ink out of a, pen so it's a Yaroslavl I think it's cool um, I know I've had a commenter here or there who doesn't appreciate me re restoring these uh, Soviet pens and because they grew up using them to which I say well you know it's a little piece of history and uh, it's always good to know where we come from in all ways you know when people start getting uh, nostalgic for the old Soviet Union pull out this puppy where you have to f to flood the, f the feed every time you want to go right yeah <laughs> so this is noodlers it actually writes pretty well once it's flooded it's just getting it flooded uh, noodlers rattler eel red which is in it in part to clean out more caked on ink because this ink is awesome for cleaning out a pen one more to go and this of course is the Parker 51 uh, the ink is Dea Trementis. another scented ink I think I mentioned that before. Smells nothing like the blackberries I grew up around, but whatever. All right, so those are the pens that are in use. Now I want to throw one other pen down here. Uh, I asked, I mentioned I don't know much about this Cora. I just have not found anything out there yet. This is a Dutch pen, 1950s. Uh, the other pen I have here, which I'd like to review and would have reviewed already, because I do like it, is a Senator. Uh, the source where I bought it is actually usually pretty good about giving you that kind of information about models and such. But they didn't. You know, we have Senator Germany written on the clip. Fairly plain finial, no finial. We have a... Uh, I don't know if I'd call it a hooded nib, let's call it a winged nib. A nice ink window that's kind of like on a Mont Blanc or a Noodler's, what's it called? Noodler's Nib Creeper. And it's a piston mechanism. Uh, the source I bought it from speaks very highly of the piston. And yet, I can't find a model anywhere or a name. And I've done some research on Senator Pens. I cannot find anything. So if anybody can point me toward a good senator resource, 
It's a German make. I would really, really appreciate it. I, If I remember correctly, I do have this written down somewhere, but I just kind of pulled it out on the spur of the moment just now. Uh, this is a 1960s or 70s pen. And it's that same aesthetic that I like. So anyway, those are the pens I'm using this week. Uh, I apologize for Monday. I did go to State Science Olympiad with my students. Of course, it was the Fargo Bismarck show. You know, I teach at a small school. We, uh, it's very difficult for us to compete, especially when we have an undersized team, because we didn't even have the regulation number of people. We had too few. Um, not making excuses or anything. It, you know, it is what it is. Um, we, but we compete against the Fargos and the Bismarcks and all the other big schools. And it was a Fargo and a Bismarck school that will be going on to Nationals, which is fine because I don't know if we have the budget to go to Nationals anyway. So I, that's a kind of a relief that I don't have to worry about that. But, uh, you know, we, we, pull, we did manage a few medals, so that was good. Uh, we stopped in Valley City on the way. Now, you've probably never heard of Valley City, but it's one of our best small state schools, in my opinion, for what it's worth. Uh, we met with a physics professor there. I don't want to do names, but uh, he showed us some programming, which was good for the kids. You know, it's a something developed by MIT, I think. It's called Scratch. It's an open source, you know, kind of a drag and drop programming to get you used to like the visual structure of programming. Because if your programming experience was like mine, you know, I learned, well, I learned TI Basic on my own. Uh, I learned how to do TRS-80 Basic and Apple IIe Basic. Uh, that was through middle school and high school. And then got to college. I had to learn Pascal, uh, which was designed to teach people, but it doesn't give that visual structure of subroutines. And uh, yes, there are loops and such in it, but it's you don't have the visual like Scratch does. So I think Scratch is actually a really good idea. And they have, I was looking at it, They it, it has activities scaled to different age groups. So yeah, we can start pro teaching programming pretty early. You know, just the thought process behind it. Um, so he had our, my students create a real simple game where they had a cat that goes back and forth like this. And he was um, supposed to catch a ball or hit the ball or something like that. Anyway, so that was kind of fun. Then we toured the campus. You know, it's college campuses are always cool. And uh, uh, Valley City is in a valley. There's a lot of water there. A lot of bridges in Valley City, by the way, if you ever visit. And there's a really cool park that overlooks Valley City. It was set up by a physicist who designed it to have a sundial in it. There are features on it that line up with the shadow um, at the beginning of each season. And there's kind of a scale map of the planets on it. So kind of a neat park to visit. Um, but anyway, we toured the campus and uh, you know, the students were just amazed. It's very different there than it is here because where I live, it's very dry. Uh, Valley City, very wet. So it's a lot of trees and it's surrounded by hills. And, uh, you know, just to me, it felt like I was back home in Pennsylvania. To my students, it's like this alien <laughs> landscape. So that was kind of fun. But then we went on to Fargo and we talked and uh, stayed the night. And then we competed the next day and then uh, drove home. Um, and if you're not aware, I live in southwestern North Dakota, almost on the South Dakota line. Um, Fargo is about six hours away, so we figured out that it's, I don't know, 12 hours of driving. Now, the school's going to pay me for 14.6. I can't, not sure where they got the figure from, maybe from Google. And maybe it did take me more than 12 hours. I'm just kind of spouting that figure off. But, uh. Yeah, they did pay me to drive because, yeah, I had to drive. So I drove the minibus there. Uh, the other coach drove the minibus back. And then we also had a pickup that had all of our equipment in it. So she drove the pickup up. I drove the pickup back. And the reason was I told you my story during my last driving video about my eyesight problem. And uh, I just did not want to drive a minibus full of kids at night. So, uh, yeah, got back here. About midnight. Uh, I then drove the empty minibus to the gas station and gassed it up. Uh, I didn't want to make my other coach do that because she'd done enough. And then uh, I finally got to bed about 1230. So Sunday I was exhausted. And uh, 
never got around to filming that note-taking video. So at the last minute I said, you know what? <laughs> we're not doing a note-taking video. We're doing uh, this footage from Rapid City. And obviously the, at that night at the motel room, I decided to at least put it together as a video to upload some time. And uh, that was the time. I actually also have some footage from uh, just a trip back from Bismarck. In fact, my last trip back from Bismarck that I will, I may upload that too sometime. And uh, anyway, I'll be going to Bismarck this weekend. Uh, while you're watching this, I am probably in my car because I'm up. Well, okay, no. I, this will appear 3 o'clock my time on Friday. Uh, I will probably get in my car about 3.30. So it takes me about three hours to get to Bismarck, so I will be probably in the car if you're watching it, you know, within the first three hours after it's uploaded. Uh, I'm considering an alternate route home because the days, or alternate route to Bismarck because the days are getting longer, so we'll see. Uh, then it'll be something worth putting on the dash cam. I did run the dash cam last time, but other than the trip up the highway to the interstate, that's about an hour, it was all interstate. So, I'd rather give you something better to look at. So, anyway, uh, that's what's going on. I'm looking forward to doing some more vintage reviews. As you might have been able to tell if you watched my Parker 51 review this week, they are quite a bit more time-consuming to produce. So, uh, kind of when I run short of modern pens that I own, then I have to start researching. Now, think with Science Olympiad over, I actually have time to do that research. And it's a fun thing to do. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm just pointing out that that's why you haven't seen anything vintage being reviewed for a long time. So that was a long rambly goodbye, wasn't it? So it is time for me to go to bed. In fact, it is 1030. So yeah, I am almost caught up in my sleep from Science Olympiad and I don't want to go backwards. So I thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you next week. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.